I'm Kenton Claremont, and you're listening to the Train to Hunt podcast. Dude, there he is. He's coming in. Come in. Get ready. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Train to Hunt podcast. I'm your host, Kenton Claremont. With me is Jesse James Wise and our guest, Trevor Neestrath. Welcome to the podcast, Trevor. Thank you for having me. Man, let's just start it off like by saying this. It took a little bit to make this happen, mm-hmm. right? Like I had to come all the way from Spokane, Washington. Trevor drove up from Southern Oregon. Yep. And, and we uh, converged at my house yeah. in Salem, Oregon. That's right. We're, we're in Jesse's um, house in Salem, Oregon, and... I'm looking at a lot of dead animals on your on your wall, Jesse. That's yeah. pretty cool. Trying to stack up as many as I can. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like a hunting cabin. Well, not not quite as good as your hunting cabin, bro, but mine's just smaller. <laughs> just less less room for yeah. more animals. Yeah, it looks like there's more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we got a lot of stuff we're gonna cover on the on the podcast today. Yeah. I'm super pumped about it. Um I let's just jump right into it, Trevor. Um I think anybody in the train hunt community knows who you are, but let's um, let's give them a little sneak peek on uh, on who you are, where you're from, um, you know, just give us a little background on you. All right. Well, I was uh, born and raised in Southern Oregon, live in a small town of Ashland. Uh, I was where I was born. Um, spent my whole life there really I, we left for just a little while to california my father's career took him down there and um bless his heart for bringing us back because this is where where uh i belong and 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 love to be but yeah, buddy. i grew up there in the cascades right on the border of the cascades and the siskiyous and uh went to elementary middle school high school um didn't really feel the need to go to college or I guess uh, didn't really know what I would do with it and so I just started working mainly just do whatever I can uh, work wise to uh, put myself out in the outdoors to be able to hunt and fish and, and do what I love. And what, and what kind of work is that? Like what have you done? And I mean, I imagine there's probably a laundry list of things that you've done, <laughs> yeah. but uh, what, what kind of work are you doing? Well, um, I did a lot of jobs growing up from construction, you know, mostly working on the farm, uh, at a young age was really my first job and farming farming is awesome it's a tough way to make a living let's say that and uh it was hard for me as i was getting older to want to go do hunts um to make enough money to cover you know expenses and stuff and so i i uh I think I was 19 when I started working at Maranatha, which is a division of Inspired Natural Foods. Um, Maranatha is a uh, peanut butter and almond butter uh, facility. They they make peanut butter and almond butter, and we have uh, small drum roasters, batch roasts, single batch roast, and I think a lot of the bigger companies do inline roasters, and so it's kind of a unique uh, career, I guess, or a job you could say. Um, and when I found that, it was all the people there were really cool. It was a really small time operation, and uh, they offered PTO, and I'm like, "What's PTO? Paid time <laughs> off?" You know, I was like, You're talking "Oh my language. man, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, could I get my September time off right now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, you know, I've I've been there ever since. I think I'm on my 17th year working there. And uh, I do a lot of stuff on the sides, and but that's like my main income, I guess. Do you, so, do you eat just a boatload <laughs> of peanut butter right now? <laughs> yeah, it goes through waves. Uh, uh, peanut butter's good. Sometimes uh, it it's just easy because yeah, <laughs> I yeah, have it there. <laughs> I just wonder, like you know, when you're when you work at a ranch or whatever, the last thing you want to do when, on, on your days off is like go back to the ranch <laughs> and do anything. It's like if you're working in, in peanut butter, like the, the last thing I want to eat is peanut butter. Right? Yeah. Oh, I just wondered. Yeah, it's an easy uh, easy go-to for hunting. It's, I think uh, that's what I eat the most, I would say. Yeah. PB&Js, slap them together, <laughs> throw some bacon on there. That's yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. Bacon and butter, man. Yeah. So where where did you get your uh, your start in hunting? Give us that that story. Um, 
Well, when we did go down to California, um, my grandfather uh, had a ranch out of um, Bakersfield, and I th- he didn't really farm too much. I think it was just a, a kind of a hobby thing. He had another business, but he lived on the ranch there and w- was just a diehard hunter. Uh, he he kind of had some money from his business to be able to go out and do like you know explore into alaska and different places like that and um seeing that at a young age and it was even before then i kind of i just it was something i felt i guess i was born with it It just uh yeah, a natural instinct to to want to hunt but um seeing him and and being on that ranch for a little bit and he would leave and come back with some, um, he liked to hunt javelina and he had an airplane fly over. I'm not sure where he would go, but he'd come back and a lot of times he'd have to make two trips and bring the javelina home and then he'd go back and get the hunting party and bring them back. And I remember him skinning them out in the barn and stuff and uh, just wanting to be a part of that. I wasn't old enough at that point to throw arrows, you know, I didn't have a bow or anything, but... I could walk alongside them while they were practice shooting, and I used to always get hassled because when they'd shoot, I'd want to run over to pick up the arrows. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. no, you're not yeah, allowed to run because yeah. it'd trip and hit the, you know, stab yourself or whatever. So real quick, I got a question for you. You ever eat javelina? I never had. Well, I probably did. I, I just don't remember. Um, I've had some mixed reviews on people who've eaten javelina. Yeah. Some of them are like, Dude, I never, I've never eaten javelina. I took one bite and was like, yeah, I'm, I can't eat this. Other people say, oh, as long as you treat it good and, mm-hmm. and process it good, then it's good. I've always just wondered, you know, yeah. about more people sh- shooting and eating javelina. I just haven't heard yeah. of people eating them. A lot of people shooting them. <laughs> yeah. many people eating them. I heard their nicknames like the stink pig or something like that. Yeah, that's down in Texas. probably pretty accurate. <laughs> yeah, but so being out down there, he had a, a kind of a trophy room too. He um, he was fortunate enough to take a polar bear and I uh, we have pictures of when I was real little laying on his rug out on the floor and and you know that that was so, that's something really special because I don't think you can you can do that anymore. I don't think you can bring polar bear hides back into the states or maybe yeah. I don't know. You might have to have some real high-end special permits to do that but he also uh had a picture of a a a kodiak brown bear that was of record size at the time and he's got a full mount he didn't have it at his house he just had a picture of it but it was at i don't know where they they put it in a museum or something grandpa's a bear (laughs) kid yeah and uh um and he was uh fortunate enough to get the grand slam which i was amazing you know he got the the bighorn sheep had the mounts on the wall and i think at the time he was like 120 something 170 something person to actually complete that task wow and uh so it's pretty neat pretty special but so i guess maybe that was uh kind of an imprint or, or something at, at a young young age and then we came back to oregon and uh I, I just wanted to hunt. You know, we we lived eight miles out of town, and the only thing to do is just to go out and play in the hills. And Jesse's been up in that area with me this year hunting, and we would just take off out the back door and hike and go explore. And uh, it just came down to hassling my dad about taking hunter safety course and stuff like that so your dad wasn't a big hunter no he's never hunted he he had a, a little 22 rifle and a pistol that he had when he first moved to ashland and he had an accident where he was trying to shoot at a jackrabbit and he had his pistol in his hand and he, he almost shot himself he discharged the pistol at the same time and, and he got rid of the pistol and he was kind of anti-handgun but he always had that 22 and um he just you know he was real cautious about it and he really pushed me towards the archery because he just was kind of scared of firearms oh, gotcha. and uh he got me uh, well, my first compound bow when i was probably 10 i guess 10 or 11 and they were they were pretty 
janky, you know, <laughs> uh, metal bus cables. Yeah, and, yeah, you know, yeah. they're like no let off. <laughs> and uh, but before all that, I would play around and just carve out of bamboo or whatever kind of little stick I could find. I would make little bows and make little arrows and fling them and. Um, my dad's just like, how do, how do you know how to do that? And I'm, I don't know. I just know how to do it. And it's yeah. just something instinctive that I've always had, I guess. Just want, just everything everything in the world is a bow <laughs> and or an arrow. Yeah. And uh, that's awesome. Yeah. So from there, um, I ended up meeting some guys in school that their fathers were really into hunting, and they would take them out and stuff and. I was kind of always on my own trying to figure it out. I think my first year actually was uh, legal to go out and hunt. My dad let me get a rifle deer tag, but I didn't have a rifle. So we borrowed this 20 gauge and bought some slugs and, wow. <laughs> and off I would go down the hill looking for deer. And, By yourself? Oh you know, yeah. My, I, I would take off all the time. like. With that 20 gauge, uh, you know, I started out with bird season would be first, you know, and so I started hiking out at dark. I'd leave and it's so crazy. I mean, you think about it now and I, my dad, he, he just trusted us or whatever, but yeah, it was a, diff yeah. It was a different time then, yeah. you know, like it, it just, you, you don't have to go back too far Yeah. to, rem to, you know, stumble at, in a time where it was okay for the kids to just go. Yeah. You know, I, I was raised the same way. Just go and be home by dinner or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you don't, you just, you sadly enough, anymore, you can't, man. you just can't do it much anymore, but that's, that's cool, man. You just had it right out your back. You literally walked yeah. out of your house with your 20 gauge and you were hunting. Yeah. By the time you hit the yard. The, the neighbors were pretty cool. The one guy uh, bought property from my dad, but I was, I had permission to cut across there. And then, um, there were 1600 acres above us that I went to school with the, the owner's daughter and we just went up one day and asked him if we can hunt on the land and he used to take us up and fish and he had a couple ponds and stuff up there and he said you know have at it no vehicles up in there if you get something and you need help you come get me and I have a jeep and I can go up there and help you get it out and so I had that access from there but um, and they ended up cutting a pipeline through the ridge by our above my dad's house and I could skip on that and cut over to um, Shell City is a, a road uh, BL, it's open to a bunch of BLM area and I just take off and hike from there and get up to Grizzly Peak which is a big mountain that sits above uh, Ashland and off we'd go. Way you go. <laughs> yeah. Way you go. That's yeah. that's incredible, man. Like which only has like two deer on it. I found out. So. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that, that's the that's the rumor. Huh? <laughs> yeah, it's bad hunting. Don't go up there. So yeah. so Trevor, you started hunting at a young age. Were you doing anything other than like were you just focused on hunting? Where did you have other, you know, school activities? Were you involved in any sport? I mean. We're talking to the three-time national train to hunt champion. <laughs> I'm assuming you have some sort of athletic background. Yeah, well, um, I would say baseball was was um, the main sport that I was involved in. Um, my dad got me in the little league and was our coach and stuff, and um, and I and I I enjoyed playing baseball all the way up into high school. Um, it got kind of rough in high school. I had a, a coach that I don't think really liked me or whatever. I, I felt like I was pretty equal with the the other guy that played my position, and um, anyways, uh, but base baseball was, you know, that's that was my athletic sport. I I wanted I did football in middle school, and, and you know, you're pretty young in middle school, you're yeah, twelve, thirteen years old, and I and I enjoyed that. Um, but when it came to for high school football, it was it was hard because. Uh, I I, I kind of needed to start working at a at a young age, or I started working on the hay farm there. Yeah. And Saturday practices and summer practices and stuff just didn't really cut it for me. And um, I did do a little bit of wrestling. Um, I wrestling was is a, is a really cool sport, but I guess it's not really fit for me. It kind of takes a person that is willing to be aggressive and and 
I don't know. You got to kind of push me pretty hard <laughs> for me to get aggressive, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah. Anybody who knows Trevor out there, <laughs> you guys, you guys get it. He's yeah. pretty laid back. I, I, I tried. I, I, I would. Uh, I got pinned quite a few times. <laughs> <laughs> just like, all right, can we just get this over with? Yeah. So I kind of gave that up, but um, yeah, I'd say those are probably the the main sports that I ever did. And then when when did when would you say like you like hunting is it man like this is what i'm gonna do like this is really my my uh my passion and and this is really what i want to do like forget about traditional sports i'm i'm going into the hunting area um i would say i was probably about i would think 13 14 ish i remember one day cutting across that property i was explaining to you and as the sun was coming up and uh i just told myself like this this is what I want to do. This is what I, I just had that feeling. The sun's coming up and I'm cruising along and, and, uh, I, I don't know. I just told myself as I'm walking, like, this, this is who I am, yeah. you know? And, and, uh, I don't know. You just have those feelings, you know, sometimes in life, with yeah. certain things. And I, and I knew what I was doing felt a hundred percent right. And it was, what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. Yeah, and anybody who's that hunter out there, they you kind of you, you understand. Yeah, that, there's that always mom- those pivotal moments. Yeah, that that moment yeah. where you're just like, and a lot of it, I think a lot of them include a sunrise of some sort, where yeah. you're or sunset, the, or sitting in the middle yeah. of the, you know, on top of maybe a fog bank or something, and the sun's <laughs> coming up, and you're just like, man, this is this is right. Yeah. This is where I belong. You know, this and is then, something that I'm I'm never gonna yeah. Stop and then, doing. And you and you keep in. You get those feelings quite often. The more times you spend in the field, they just yeah, they never stop. Yeah, it's they, great. They're always they're always there. Yeah. Um. So, along the same lines, but I do want to get into the train to hunt challenge and how you how you came across it, how you heard about it, and then a little bit of your experience of uh, in, uh, in your feelings up about the train to hunt challenge and the whole train to hunt experience i guess i'll call it um well we were we would always run around at our archery range just kind of jogging throwing arrows doing just different things to kind of get our heart rate up and 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 shoot under that kind of a pressure you know and um it wasn't too long after we have been we were doing that at the range that uh I think I saw it on like a Western Hunter ab- advertisement and maybe it was even Eastman's at one point. Yep. Yep. And um so I I started kind of like looking at it but I never really talked about it and then some of my buddies were like have you seen this challenge and stuff and then and w- at the time you're looking at the website and you're like man this looks awesome but it looks like really intimidating because there's some really badass looking dudes on this website that was probably that stupid <laughs> I, uh, that, yeah. that stupid web, well hey you know this is a this was a learning process for me as well and th- when i first came up with the idea it was i was so borderline on like how do I, I just didn't have any idea how to market it and so yeah. my first instinct was well let's call out people let's basically call call people out and say are you are you willing to come out and compete are you, you think you're a, basically do you think you're a beast let's go let's yeah. find out who you are yeah. so the, i think the ad you're talking about <laughs> was me literally running through the forest <laughs> with the no shirt on yeah right and uh yeah i i still hear about that <laughs> i like to bring it up on a yeah. it, well it was a funny story because we were uh we we were just shooting um some pictures for for the challenge like and for the website like we just started the website a year prior and we were looking for some good photos we came across a guy who was willing to trade a a good whitetail spot for some good photos and this guy was like top of the line had done some photos for like national geographic and he was he was good and we knew it so we went um we went uh, into kind of right on the fringes of this whitetail spot we wanted to show him and he brought all this camera gear and set up all these lights and we did a bunch of we did a bunch of pictures of just like packing elk out and you you know like intense like full draw pictures and probably after about an hour or so he's like well is that is that good and i was 
I was all I was all about it. And uh, my business partner at the time, uh, Dan Staten's like, well, let's let's get some let's get some out of the box pictures. Claremont, take your shirt off and run up the hill. <laughs> and I'm, just like, uh, I, I'm like, it's snowing at this point, by the way. And I'm like, oh, yeah, okay. He's like, it's a fitness site. You're, yeah. You, you got you got to show them the goods. Yeah. And I was like, all right, all right. So I took my shirt off and took off running <laughs> up the hill. And the only picture that anybody's probably ever seen is the one picture that I was like, oh man, all right, let's do it. <laughs> so yeah, at the time, it's really toned back, and I've come to realize that that you can't advertise an event with just the beast or it's going to intimidate even people who belong there you yeah. know and, mm-hmm. and currently we're still working on trying to figure out a way to decrease the intimidation factor because competition just in and of itself is intimidating enough and if you put people in the marketing that you're like there's no way i could compete with that guy or that girl then it just adds another layer of intimidation which for the most part it doesn't take much to get people out you know, mm-hmm. so, yeah, back in those days, it was a little, <laughs> little yeah. different than yeah. than what it's uh, currently uh, currently is. And, you know, the challenges changed a lot. That you, oh, you yeah. Know, you know, of. Yeah. So. Uh, so you, you so you see this advertisement, you yeah. talk to somebody <laughs> and you're like, eh, all right, let's give it a shot. Yeah. I was, it was kind of like um, I just went ahead and clicked on there. I'm, I'm going to do it. Yeah. And then uh, uh, my wife she ended up she just she she went for it and she never even told me about it she just clicked on there i wanted her to go but i just didn't know how to like pressure her into doing it right and uh i think i made some stupid comment of maybe i should uh go with jessica as a co-ed team we'd probably kick some ass and, and i think maybe she got all offensive by that or oh. something or whatever <laughs> and then went ahead and, and then signed up but um and and then also uh drew once he he saw the uh, drew bailey a good friend of mine he once he saw the advertisement and stuff and in the magazines and everything else and then was looking on the on online he he kept kind of really hinting towards he wanted to do it and so i was kind of you know sometimes you dive into something and people start following you so i yeah. i did it and then drew's sent me an email or text oh, i'm in and then Lindsay's with me and so we just went for it and we traveled up to Eugene. Um, I think it was 2013 was the first one I did. Yeah. That sounds about right. Yeah. Yep. And, uh, at that time it was a two day event and right off the bat, when you get there, it was, uh, it was, you know, uh, real, like a real friendly atmosphere. I, I think you guys were all there uh, meeting everybody, greeting or whatever. And, and it, you just kind of it started to tone back didn't feel so intimidating and you still didn't really know what you'd gotten into but um you learned real quick that it's it it is a competition but i like how you've set it up to it's it's a challenge to yourself yeah really and and you know if you can go there and kick some butt and and win a cam sure but if you go there and you can and finish it and and just they're part of it it's even better i mean you just anything that to get anybody motivated is is highly respectable you know absolutely and and that and you know that was the whole point of of the competition was to get people thinking about training for hunting season prior to june july august yeah so um that it wasn't really set up to be this cutthroat. Let's um, let's find out who the biggest you know badass in the in the United States is. Although at first it was marketed that way, it was like let's find out who the fittest bow hunter on the planet was. But in my head, it was like I just want to give hunters an alternative to 5Ks or sprint triathlons or mountain bike races or these things that the hunters were out doing to just motivate themselves to stay in shape yeah. in the off season. Yeah. I thought, let's give, let's give these guys a real, these guys and girls, let's give them a real competition that will actually give them a measuring stick on their, their actual field fitness, Yeah, their field fitness. And, um, so you hit it on the head, man. Like, yeah, when you think about competitions, 
there's a there's a sense of nervousness or intimidation or man what kind of guys and girls am i going to be rubbing up against is it going to be puff out your chest and look how you know uh, you know basically two bull elk like showing each other <laughs> like how big they are and it's, n- it's none of that as you found out yeah. and from the get-go even when it was advertised kind of that way it, it's never been about that it's always been about come out do the challenge you'll figure out that it's really about just using it as a measuring stick to what do we need to work on between yeah. now and hunting season so that I can enjoy hunting season more better. And in a lot of respects, it's really set up so that you have an idea how you're going to perform under pressure. It's yeah. more than just, am I fit enough to pack out my bull elk? It's about, am I going to be able to keep my shit together long enough to get this elk killed? Yeah. And so that's that's the way it's set up yeah. and, I, and and people found out that really quick it's 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 good to hear you say that because we've never talked about this kind of stuff yeah you know, i've always known who you are and i've seen you compete for four years now and i've put cams a lot of cams around your neck but <laughs> this is the first time that we've ever really talked about um what the train hunt challenge looked like through your eyes so that's good to hear yeah yeah, yeah it's it, it's really really a lot of fun i mean it's kind of you know how working out is for people yeah. um it's not fun when you're thinking about it you know or trying to get motivated to do it but once you do it and you're in the process of of sweating and working out you're, you're enjoying it you're liking it and you feel great afterwards so you know so that, has it changed the way that you has it changed your lifestyle or the way you approach hunting from a physical preparation standpoint have you have you uh has it changed you basically or have you always just thought man i'm gonna get in shape I'm yeah gonna- no i i would say it probably has a hundred hundred percent changed me um i you know the the few sports i did do growing up you know we i, I wasn't in it long enough to really get to the training aspect of 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 the sport and um and so going into hunting um i never really trained for hunting i always just worked hard you know you know hauling hay all summer long i was in great shape you know and and i could go in the woods and it's no big deal right and and you were young yeah and and (laughs) young and uh so after i you know started doing the the train to hunt um and and then you you know your eyes are kind of open to a bunch of people that are doing you know training for hunting and uh so yeah i mean it, i every year um just really try to stay in be- the best shape as i can for for hunting and uh you know it's it, hunt, hunting can get pretty dang physical when you get in there too deep you know yeah. you can you can end up going, oh man, what did I do? And the next thing you know, if you're out there three, four, almost you know, five in the morning, or you spend 24 hours out there just hauling meat, you're you're reaching pretty down, pretty deep to try to pull that task off. It's it's rough for sure. And I'm glad you brought it up because <laughs> this was my next question. My next question is because you you talked about the pack out and how it can really get in the grind and how there's times when you're you're trying to um your head's telling you to stop you're like man it's late or i can just hang this thing in a tree or um everybody kind of rubs up against that um that moment that moment where you Mm -hmm. get to decide whether i'm going to ignore the voices in my head or i'm going to keep going and probably more than anybody in the competitions and this is going to be the seventh year of the train hunt challenge and i've seen a lot of people do the train hunt challenge i see your ability to block out the noise and keep going yeah um give us give us just a peek (laughs) at what drives you like what what what's the conversation like in your head when you hit that point what what do you what how do you get through it how do you get through that wall well 
I don't know. I mean, I, I think different things will come to mind when you're really pushing really hard at, at certain points of whatever the task you're doing is. Um, I, I think a, a variety of a lot of things will pop up into mind. I, I, I've lost friends um, that should still be here and should still be hunting with me and just their life's ended too too soon and so i i think of people like that that you know they i'm sure wish they could still be here doing it and so i will grind out and try to push hard try to try to in a way hope that they they're looking down on me and are proud and so i'm pushing hard for them i think about uh uh my my grandfather who passed away i think probably the first or second train to hunt i did uh i he he was my grandfather that, that didn't hunt but he was the, the toughest man i've ever met yeah and or known and uh grandpas are tough they're, they're tough what was his name uh herman herman yeah and uh it, it seems like every challenge I, at some point i'm trying to talk to my grandpa in, in my head or i'll say a prayer try to make him proud and, and think about uh some of the some of the laughs i've heard him you know when he's been proud of me with the, that laugh i'll think of that and so anyways i'll I'll just uh because it gets pretty bad i mean your your body your mind is telling you you need to stop but i think everybody has the ability to push way way further than they really think they can and uh if you can get past that by however it is in your mind talking yourself out of stopping you, you just the pain kind of goes away and you can keep pushing i couldn't agree with you more trevor i think that everybody has the ability in fact they say that that physically most people only do about 30 percent of what they're capable of physically because their brain stops them at about 30 percent of their of their <coughs> capability before, yeah. and they they just don't know how to get through that wall yeah they don't know how to talk to them how to shut up the voices basically yeah and along those lines there's something i've been thinking about i wrote a post the other day about <clears throat> how you want to shut the voices off in your head and just keep going just plow through it i've since thought about it and <clears throat> thought about when i was writing questions for this podcast and thought i don't know necessarily that it's so much a battle as it is a a friendship like you almost have to become comfortable with that guy when he comes up he's he's scared right like th there's there's like he's uncomfortable he's hurting he's in pain and he's scared that man if i don't stop i'm something bad might happen you know yeah you have to just be able to comfort him and go hey old friend like it's gonna be okay <laughs> we're gonna keep plowing forward and i'm gonna I'm, I'll, I'll carry you with me you yeah know? yeah and, um so it's not so much a battle as it is like you're talking about you just you, th you think positively you think about how lucky you are yeah. to even be able to do what you're doing yeah and you think about um you know people from the past and the, and and that's that's an that's amazing that's i think that's what people really need these days because people in general are pretty soft and pretty scared yeah. of really dipping into the pain cave is a pretty mm -hmm. pretty good uh term so that's that's pretty awesome um that you're able to push through. has this always been with you have you always been like this trevor is there something like you've you just kind of feel like you've always been the guy that oh, i'm just gonna plow right through this stop sign and go <laughs> oh i i guess i yeah i mean you know you can get into pretty crummy situations in your life and if you can just think positive and think of how how it could be so much worse but yeah. how you know how give us good. one give us an example <laughs> give us give us your like your your one story that you like you've told the most about man this was rough <laughs> and you did it anyway because obviously nobody's going to tell a story that yeah i just quit but <laughs> what's the story you tell the most oh man i tell a lot of stories <laughs> um well i is there one that just sticks out in your head like well the one that sticks out 
because it happened recent this year in, in our elk hunt, I can tell you about that, that um, uh, Drew Bailey killed his first bull elk um, this year, and we were pretty far back in there. We we utilized mountain bikes, and, and we hiked a lot, but even even having a mountain bike is still... It's still so tough. Yeah, I mean, you're not riding those bikes up any hills. And we were uphill both ways, really. There was, uh, anyways, he, he he killed his bull. And it took us the entire day. He killed it early in the morning, and it took us all day to get it out. It was like 7.45 or 8 o'clock by the time we got out of the woods and quickly was able to get cleaned up. We were fortunate enough to stay down in a close to where they had a shower. We got cleaned up, and uh, anyways, that that grind that day was was something else. Uh, I think I maybe gr- uh, made Drew grind harder than maybe I should have. He had a pretty good load on him, but I wanted to get out, you know, in a couple loads. And as I I don't know if I was just getting, um, I, I think I was maybe getting. Uh, antsy to get after elk on my own in a way i guess i was uh i don't know i was just i was just pushing him i wanted to get out and i wanted to be able to hunt the next day so i guess i was getting uh, getting pretty antsy yeah antsy here so was it was this like an all night like well it was it was an early morning and then we got out late you know it was it was getting dark by the time we got out but where the grind really kicked in is I, I was wanting to hunt so bad. Um, but I, I just love it so much. I really wanted to get an elk that I was committed to go back out the next day. Yeah. And so we, I pushed real hard. We got him out. And I woke Drew up. He got maybe a couple hours of sleep. And he took me back up to the spot, dropped me off. And I went to the same exact spot where he killed his elk. And then I killed an elk. <laughs> and so we're we're going all over. We're... I got kind of emotional over it because I knew what we had done that day before, and we have to do it all over again the sa- the the very next day. Was the emotion from like just like that realization that you're like oh crap, yeah. realization, well, uh, or was the emotion from like oh like that exhilarating <laughs> like I just did it again? Yeah, it it was it was a, it was a little bit of both. <laughs> it was it was kind of uh, I. I didn't get an elk the year before, and uh, I I don't know. It was something about when I let that arrow go and I plugged him perfectly, and I watched him tumble over right in front of me. It was something special, and then and so I think I was kind of super excited because I hadn't got an elk in so long. It seemed like, and um, and then the realization that we were we were in for it again and I, I was out there by myself at that time and cutting up an elk by yourself and dealing with that and battling the heat you know archery yeah. season's hot yeah. i mean you gotta be pretty quick but you know i'll, I'll be honest i i i tried calling my wife because there was cell service there but i accidentally facetimed her and when she got on there i mean i was bawling yeah and i was like i love this stuff so much you know <laughs> <laughs> And then I was like, oh, and we're so screwed. Like, and she's, <laughs> she's just leaving Ashland. Yeah. And so, uh, she made it there by the time we were on our last little haul out and she, she got to carry a little bit, but it was hours and hours and hours of carrying heavy loads on your yeah. back, but we didn't lose any meat. And Good. Of yeah. course. Of course awesome. That's what it's yeah. all about, man. That's, it's funny how emotional we can get yeah you know when it comes right down to it what what do you think where do you think that comes from like where what's the emotion about like (laughs) grown men don't cry over much yeah but i've seen more grown men cry including myself over a successful hunt and it seems to me like the harder it is Mm -hmm. the more tears there are yeah you get so wrapped up you know where, where do you where like what do you think that is you know I, I it's i don't know it's that's hard to answer i mean it's uh i don't know maybe it's just like you're you're tears tears of joy obviously i mean yeah and you know and 
I, sometimes I get a little emotional over my kill. Like, I don't know, maybe I'm just sharing part of, of that animal's death, you know, for my success, you know, for my, for my, my well-being of, uh, I'm going to survive for another year. And I don't know if it's, uh, I don't know if it's a, a, an ancestral thing that's kind of like in our spirit or something. I don't. I don't know. You think our you think our our ancestors cried when they killed it? Yeah, they, they were. Do you think they were uh, like, or do you think they were like, <laughs> just club it on the head and drag it back and just start, start chewing on it? I, th- I, I think I think it come boils down to uh, just the person that you are. You know, I mean, I know um, I have been. You know, I grew up hunting. I grew up killing animals and i didn't emotionally connect to it until i started bow hunting and once i started bow hunting and and killing animals with my bow and being so close in contact with them it was then it the emotion hit me and um and for instance like i went hunting we went my son Ezra and I went down to Ashland a couple times and hunted with Trevor in his areas, like he said. And I can tell you personally, man, hunting with Trevor, I watched him, you know, shoot a cougar, you know. And this guy has, and it's, and it, what it boils down to is he has respect for the game pursued, for the animal that's harvest harvested. It, there was no disrespect in the in anything that he said in the way that he treated the animal after it was shot. And I mean, it just made my respect for Trevor just grow immensely. And yeah. I have the utmost respect for this guy, but he absolutely loves and adores every single animal he pursues. Um, he gets excited about everything, you know, out in the woods. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> that's just, he lives it, you know? I mean, just going down to his, his house, you know, they call it elk camp for a reason because it is, it's like just, chocked full of antlers and chocked full of of just memories of him of his hunting life and, yeah and you wear your muddy boots into his house and it's cool <laughs> <laughs> you know uh, yeah. and it's it's like you're in hunting camp 24 7 so um this guy lives and breathes every second of it and and he has respect for those animals and i think for me that's where my emotion comes from is the respect i have for the game pursued and and those dreams and you're always always continually thinking about your next move and when it works out and like trevor said you know i'm guessing like he was there the next day and it worked out and everything came together and it just and it's like this big emotional dump of like that weight coming off of your shoulders of putting meat in the freezer and, and getting it done and and having that respect for that that bull elk that you know lived its life out there and yeah I, you know, here's part of what I, th- I think it's about because I think you can compare it to like, honestly, like we get to almost, um, experience, I'm not going to compare it. The best thing I can think of is like winning a, a national championship or an Olympic gold medal or something, because I know for me when the more I plan and the more time invested and the more energy and brain power that I have invested into a hunt and let's face it we all i mean that's all from september between september's all we're really thinking about is how we're to prepare for the next september and we can't wait till the next september gets here yeah. i think it's a culmination of so much preparation and then this heightened awareness and then in the moment you've spent so much time because i would argue that you're probably less likely to get a, emotional over a an animal that came real easy Yeah. You know, like even regardless of everything else aside, the size, the circumstance, if it's if it's an easy animal to get like, oh, I wasn't even going to go on this hunt. And you go out and you drive down the road and, you know, a big black tail runs across the road and you shoot it. You're probably you're less likely to get emotional over that as opposed to a black tail that you had been hunting for like three years. You've been busting your butt. You've snuck in there. You kind of, you figured him out. You snuck in the tree. You stayed the night. Yeah. And he walks. Everything comes up and bang. Yep. Suddenly the emotional dump because of all the time and effort and um, preparation is all invested in that one moment. And the second that that arrow flies, it's 
it's done and you and you uh and and you've done it you know like you've accomplished what you what you set out to do and i know for me that that was that that was the big dump like this year when my when my brother and i went on that sheep hunt we busted our butts it was this was three years in the making and we walked and walked and walked and walked with with lots of weight by the way (laughs) we we you know we weren't very we decided over our the course of our backcountry hunts that there's certain things we'll pack on our back that's why we work out we're just Mm -hmm. not going to do without we're going to have plenty of food (laughs) we're going to bring some of these luxurious items because we'd rather have them than get cold or be hungry yeah and so we're pack we're walking around these you know the big the brooks mountain range with 80 pound packs and that's just our gear and we did this for um for 10 days and we saw zero legal rams and had exhausted ourselves day after day after day when we got on these when we got on these rams and we ended up killing these two rams the floodgates opened and it was all because we had put on so much work if we would have stepped off the plane walked up a drainage and killed them it wouldn't have been that way yeah you know so it's really just a matter of like how much do you have invested and it doesn't even have to be a particular animal like you don't have to go out and say this is the deer or this is the elk i'm going to kill and i'm going to work my butt off to kill this elk Mm -hmm. it can just be the amount of work and the and your your senses are heightened Mm -hmm. for so long and you're sneaking and like everything is just like it magnified for so mm-hmm. long and you're working and you're like straining and you're just like really trying to make it happen to stay positive and then suddenly it happens in a flash and we I, we did it we yeah. did it yeah. and then suddenly the floodgates open so that's my take on it is that it's about accomplishing what you put out wh- what you set out to do and it's sad that a lot of people don't get a chance in any areas of life. I mean, we're not not talking about necessarily even hunting, but to just set, I'm going to do this and I know it's going to be hard, but I'm going to do it anyway. And then to accomplish that people, man, people need to feel that because once you get that feeling, you want it again, baby. You you can't get here fast enough. (laughs) And, And that's why, that's why I think all of us in this room are really, we're, we're not out for the easy one. We'll take it. But we're, we're, not, we're not afraid. In fact, we know that there's more reward in the hard one. Yep. And so we're, gonna, we're willing to put that, that time in. And, and, so that's, uh, and that's why I think it's so important for everybody. Even if you, even if you have a, a honey hole mm-hmm. that you hunt every year and you know, I'm going to be able to go here. I'm going to be able to bugle from this ridge. There's going to be a bull right down there. I'm going to go down there. And I know where he, they go. And I'm going to go down there and kill them. Even if you do that, you should, you should prepare. You should put yourself through some, you know, you should really like train for it and be ready for it. And, and, uh, and so when that does happen, you know, you have this sense of accomplishment as opposed to I'm just going to sit on the couch all, you know, all summer and, you know, eat Cheetos and watch hunt movies. And then when fall comes around, I'll just jump my pickup and go kill, kill out, which, you know, I just feel like that's part of it, you know, that y- yeah. you, you can increase your reward by the sacrifices you make on the front end. Yeah. 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 I think the the <clears throat> if you are successful, it's kind of just the, uh, the, the cherry on top, you know, for sure. And sometimes the, you, sometimes some of the best hunts you've ever had aren't even, you don't harvest anything, yep. but just the, the country you've been in and what you've gone through and, it is really sticks out even more than than if you had killed you know absolutely which mm. which kind of leads me to leads me to my next question which is you know i just think it's important that you know most people most people know how to answer this question but i think it's something that everybody everybody um everybody should should know and that is if you were to put these things in order of importance tyler in hunting season you're you're planning you're probably already thinking about next hunting season you know it's still blacktail season right now have you got a black you already, did you get your blacktail yeah well, it, it ends sunday well, up here up here yeah but yeah. His, his ended down in his area last i think weekend. your wife's out 
Yeah, my wife's actually out, out right, right, now. right now. She now. should be coming back in the house. I saw her sneak moment. off with the camo and the bow. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, man, I wish I could go. It's hardcore, man. <laughs> Can we just do the podcast walking behind? <laughs> no, that wouldn't <laughs> work. That wouldn't work. That would screw up her time. Yeah. <laughs> But if you were if you were to put these things in order of importance, you're gonna somebody invites you on a hunt. Let's just say somebody invites you on a hunt. What's the most important thing about this hunt? Is it who's who you're gonna be able to hunt, who you're hunting with? Is it what species you're hunting? Is it where you're hunting, or is it what when you're hunting? You know, re, you know pre rut, rut, post rut, time of year. What what would you how would you put those in order let's start what's the most important thing to you mm. well well i guess it, it would probably be what what you're gonna hunt would probably be the first yep because then i can i kind of got a plan of where, where i can start preparing for what i'm going to do and what do you want it to be like if someone says trevor hey you want to go on a fill in the blank hunt you're in <laughs> um i I think I want to go on a ram hunt. A ram hunt. Yeah. All right. I want to shoot a bighorn sheep. Yeah. Of some buddy. sort. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Join the crowd. Get in line. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just because of my grandpa getting the grand slam, it makes me want to try. I want to get. I want an opportunity at least once in my lifetime. Yeah. To try it. Yeah. And I would, and I would really like to do it with my bow, even though that's pretty tough to do. Is there oppor- There's opportunities in Oregon, right? Like just there's a draw. Of it's sorts. it's like winning the lottery you don't build points it's luck of the draw oh it is and that's a one and done you it's uh you get the tag and if you're successful you're successful if not you're done tough yeah Yeah. so of course i mean we put in for it every year but um if you really want to do it you got to start looking out of state and building points and well two people that i know of have drawn bighorn sheep tags in, in colorado two people um so i don't know if that's because i don't know if that's because they're in staters or i don't i don't really know a ton about the draw the draw system in colorado but i know two guys that drew big horn sheep in in colorado and they're pretty young guys they're not they're not like these old timers that have been putting in for 40 years so i've been starting to show up at the sports shows putting five dollar raffles in because i hear people winning and yeah you well you got to go down to the sheep show in reno i know we're we're, we're toying with that i think we're gonna make it i heard that's a really fun show we're head we're, we're going down sweet yeah my brother and i are gonna go down there for sure there's a pack race you should look into it. Pack race. Yeah, there's a, it's, it's 45 pounds, um, and it's 4.1 miles oh, wow. in the snow. Oh, we, wow. Ryan and I did Are it Are you last sure week. you want to invite Heck this yes. guy? To <laughs> 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 you know he yeah. doesn't like losing anything. For right? It's four, funny. <laughs> for four years, I thought, I don't, I don't know if I could beat that guy. And three years ago, I was like, yeah, m- maybe. Last year, I was like, yeah, I don't know. I don't. Know. I, I better start training harder because I don't think I can beat that guy. And she, I, I came. My brother stepped it out faster than I did. I, we, uh, he ended up getting um, second, and I got third in that pack race. There was a guy who was a uh, he's a crazy dude. His name's uh, Greg McHale. He's from uh, Whitehorse, um, Yukon, and he we get done with this pack race and we're standing around and I was just like, who is this guy? So first of all, we show up, we all throw some packs on. There's probably only about 20 of us there and maybe 30 of us. And, uh, we're all just kind of standing around shooting the breeze and talking about this, this, you know, trip pack race. We're about ready to go on up this mountain and over on the other side and then back, back down. And, um, this guy, all right, let's, let's get everybody on the line. And Greg, like, throws his little pack on and takes his coat off and he's down to like running tights, tennis <laughs> shoes with gaiters and this is little pack. And you know, I'm, I'm, I got, cl- I got like pants on and <laughs> big pack and trekking poles. And he's just like, like it's a sprint race. Well, this guy just takes off and he, he smokes us all. And at the end we come to find out, he was like, Oh yeah, I just, this is a pretty short race. I'm nor I'm used to, doing a lot longer races oh yeah what what kind of races do you do and he's like oh i'm I'm a professional adventure racer oh wow he said most we just got done with the world championships uh like th- four weeks ago or something like that and it was like how long was that greg and he's like 
Oh, it was 600K. So it was like 300 miles plus. <laughs> Jeez. I'm like, yeah, this guy probably has some experience. That six, that six miles right there was not <laughs> a big push for this guy. <laughs> so, yeah, we learned our lesson on that. It would be fun, though. You'd have yeah. a good time. It's, it's you know, it's a, it feels a lot like a, a train hunt challenge yeah. where everybody's a little nervous at the beginning because they I, – I have a theory about being nervous, too, especially with, you know, guys like guys like you, you – you know you're going to do well, but I think the nerves really come from really just hoping that when the time comes, I'm hoping that I'm brave enough to push, to just keep pushing. Yeah. Like, that, that's what I get nervous about is, like, I have to just talk to myself, like, yeah, you're going to be fine. Just get, get going. And once, once you get going, the nerves go away, right? Because you just, your blood's pumping and you're kind of into the race and you, you're kind of feeling things out. And, okay, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. Um, but it's, you know, you're a little nervous at the beginning and, and, uh, at the end, everybody's like super stoked that everybody just finished and it was yeah. fun. So you should go. It'd be yeah. fun. It'd be fun. Plus you can have a chance that you can put in for a lot of drawings. Yeah. Man. A lot of drawings. Well, you heard, did you hear Santino won the doll sheep hunt last year at the, the Western Hunter Expo? He just put in, you know who Santino is? I'm not sure. So this buddy of mine out of Colorado, he just puts in five dollar ticket in uh into a dull sheep i think it was a dull sheep uh raffle was it a, it was a desert sheep he drew was it a desert wasn't it all i know is a sheep hunt i can't remember which but yeah that's the best way to go about trying, yeah trying to get a sheep hunt yeah ryan what was it oh nobody knows i just know it was a sheep hunt and i knowing santino he probably went up there and smoked a good one nice yeah but good plan yeah good plan yeah that's where uh and it's funny for me because that, that's probably your best chance to get some of those ram hunts but then the way my mind thinks i'm like what is what's the dates on that it's like january oh no it's, or uh december what what are the dates on that on the the, on the sheep show? show it's like Jan january yeah january's 8th or something like that yeah it's real early so i'm like sitting there going well i could go ahead and get a motel room and go for that but the river could also be in shape, and I could be down catching some <laughs> hog steelhead. And so, I'm like, what do I sacrifice? But I'll tell you what uh, you do is you, <laughs> is you send some. You find out one of your buddies is going. You send him with some money and say, "Enter me in this drawing." Yeah, some of them you have to be present though. Yeah, it's kind of tough. I think some of them you do. But so okay, so you want <laughs> so what your honey is in, is the most important. What's what's maybe t second on the list? Um, how's our list go again? So who, what, when, where? Who, what, when, and where? So you already got the what you're hunting. So you got who? Yeah, I guess you kind of know where with the what, sort of. Yeah. I'm I guess it would probably have to be who I'm hunting with. Okay. Um, and I'll, I'll hunt with just about anybody, you know, but that'll determine like where we're, what we're going to do, or where we're going to go. Um, I don't know that. Sometimes when you get out in the field with who you're with, yeah, um, well, kind of you get the feeling of how how things are going to go because some people just really you, you'll know right off the bat if somebody's wood wise or you know if they know what they're doing. It's just by the way they're walking and talking. Yeah, you know, you don't talk loud in the woods. Yeah. And I kind of I've had it a couple of times with. They just, the normal voice start talking. I'm like, dude, we don't talk like that. Yeah, what, are you, what are you doing? What are you doing? Yeah. Or they you just scared everything like, out of here. Or they're like clearing their throat. <clears> oh, throat> yeah. Like, Coughing or whatever. You're like, dude, you have to hold that in yeah. for another time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> same way, man. It's like, if you, uh, it doesn't take long. Like you said, it doesn't yeah. take long and you're like, okay, I'm going to have to do something else. See, yeah. you're, you're a little bit, not that I won't. Not that I won't hunt with anybody, but I actually, I have, I'm pretty picky about who I hunt with yeah. just because I think because my hunting time is so precious. Yeah. Like, you know, you know, this only comes once a year. Mm -hmm. I don't want to spend a bunch of time with somebody who I'm just going to be wanting to get away from the whole time. Yeah. You know? Like go over there. <laughs> I'll see you over there. Yeah. Go over that ridge. <laughs> yeah. Well, then. You usually don't hunt with those people anymore after that, you know. Yeah, more than you once. You kind of learn, yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I think you get, you do get your kind of hunting partners or buddies or yeah. whatever. And 
if everything falls together, you're able to hunt with them all throughout the year. But um, I, I think some of the best hunting, I well, I know some of the best hunting is when I'm just all by myself, just solo hunting. Yeah. You know, that's when I'm the most successful. Um, Why do you think that is? Um, I don't know. I think maybe because I, I don't want to say whoever I'm hunting with is like holding me back, but if I'm by myself, you know, I can go wherever I want, stay as long as I want. You know, yeah. it's, it's, I, you know, it's on me. I can move as fast as I want, go slow, whatever. And, mm -hmm. um, just less scent, just yeah. less everything, you know, you just, yeah. So I agree. It's what do you think, Jess? I'm, yeah. I mean, I'm I'm with Trevor. I love hunt, having people there to hunt with. But man, when I'm solo hunting, when I'm by myself, um, it's it's just me, right? It's just, I get to make the decision. I don't have to worry about what the other person's thinking, what they're feeling. You know? Yeah. It, it's me, and I I'm just. I go, and when I go, I, I can go as fast as I want. And usually, if I'm elk hunting, I mean, you've seen it. Yep. It's 120%, yeah. and I'm gone, and uh, and I'm getting there. Yeah. Um, and I don't have to wait for anybody. I don't have to worry about somebody being like, well, what if let's do this? And I don't have to argue with anybody. Right. Yeah. Uh, I argue with myself enough when I'm out there. I don't need anybody else to argue with. So. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I think – I love being by myself. I love coming back to camp to a group of guys. Yeah. Yeah. You know, That's some of the most share. exciting. Yeah. You know, it, you're sitting there just, well, this is what I saw. And yeah. You yeah, yeah. hear the whole story, yeah. then yeah. the other guy's yeah. story. Uh, that's a lot of fun. Yeah. But I do like having, finding people that I mesh really well with out in the woods, you know, and that that we get, we're like on the same wavelength yeah like you've been doing it enough to where you you know like what trevor said you know when you step out in the woods they do everything that you do yeah and they they walk quieter and they and they'll read the wind well um they won't talk you know yeah stuff like that good hunting partners are they're they're hard to come by yeah. only because it takes a couple hunts to get to that point mm -hmm. where yeah. you don't worry about what they're thinking. Yeah. You're doing your thing. That's that's the thing I like about solo hunting is that even if you're with somebody who you guys have been hunting a while and, you know, you know kind of how each other are thinking and there's never a disagreement about how to approach a hunt or, or make an approach on a bull or whatever, there's always – a little bit of your attention my uh, how about this there's always a little bit of my attention on my hunting partner mm -hmm. on maybe maybe i like you said i second get i can second guess myself enough without wondering if this guy is second guessing me too and mm -hmm. like hey hey maybe we need to go this way where it's all on you it's all yeah. on you you don't have to th like 100 percent of your energy can go on the task at hand and zero of it goes on worrying about the rest of the the hunting party or whatever now when mm -hmm. you hunt with somebody long enough and and you guys have had the discussion of brother i'm here to support you i'm gonna call for you when you see a bull you just go act like you're all by yourself all i'm gonna do is whatever you tell me to do and that's mm -hmm. it you know yeah. you can get in that situation where they they kind of know what what you want them to do and yeah. they're going to stay you know 70 yards behind you or 50 yards behind you and just kind of follow you towards the bull or whatever it might be um that's that's magic yeah. man you never lose that hunting partner <laughs> yeah well yeah. and i think that that basically you know you have to know somebody you have to be friends with that person to and they have to be a humble enough person and you have to be a humble enough person to actually do that to actually say tell me what you want me to do right you know because there's i mean there's not a you know a lot of humble people out there that are willing to let you tell them right. to do something and i would like to be that kind of person that would be like all right dude i'm i'm in it i want to be supportive yep. i want to just be the support role 
for you in this hunt, you know, like you were in Idaho this year with me. Um, and you just, you were the caller and my, my mule. (laughs) (laughs) I play play a really good, I play that role really good. You do, you do. (laughs) You're invited on every elk hunt I go on. (laughs) In in the last like two years, I'm pretty sure I've been on more elk hunts that I didn't have a tag in my pocket than I've been on that with, I had tags in my pocket just because man, I, I just love being there. I love being support crew and like. I like being around elk hunting yeah. and the elk woods and being part of what's going on. And man, I'll I'll do whatever you want me to do. I'll sh- if we see an, hear an elk and you want me to just sit there and, and don't move until I come back, mm-hmm. I'm on it, man. As long as I can be around <laughs> when you kill him, and I'll go down there and help you. Yeah. But it, that's, I think I get that. I think I get it from my dad. My dad's always been that way. Like it doesn't matter. He. he it's not really about me being successful. It's about us being successful. And when you kill one, I feel just as happy for you as I would um, as if I killed one. And that's not exactly true, but almost as happy as if I killed one because I love killing yeah. them. But, but you get the idea. Like, it's just it's not about me. It's about us, and let's, yeah. let's do this and spend some time together. It's something that um, we – might be the only time that men actually get to go out. We don't do, you know, men just don't do a lot of like bonding time, right? Like we don't, you know, let's get together and, you know, do whatever, you know, like maybe <laughs> yeah. if we get together and watch a football game or whatever. But really for me, like the, the, the bonds that I build, the strongest bonds I build with other men are in the hunting woods for sure. Yeah. It's just, you know, it's amazing how much, gets talked about and how much character is revealed if yeah. you get somebody if you want to know a man take him on a seven day backpack on if you really want to know yeah who he is, if you want to know what he's, he's all about because if he doesn't show you he'll probably tell you you know that's yeah it's just it i think that it's just the the nature you know the mountains reveal yeah yeah that uh what, what we're talking about that is just brings me brings a, a thought to mind that um i i've never really asked to go on a hunt with anybody and through train to hunt i met aaron Lenka. oh yeah and just an awesome guy dude i yeah. love that guy he's awesome yeah and he helped me out with some of the draws he was like he's on it and he i i drew a tag and then I'm trying to figure out where I'm going and stuff. And then, so I tell him where I'm going and sure enough, like that's pretty much right where he was planning on going. So then he's kind of like, well, we need to kind of like maybe exchange notes. So we're not yeah, giving yeah. up. But finally I just, I, I, I built up the courage and said, it'd be awesome to hunt with you, man. And that dude took me into some of the most amazing country I've ever seen. It was, we had a, we had an awesome hunt. We we spent five days up on the mountain and uh, kind of got low on food. I should have sucked it up. We had some good bucks on this other ridge. Yeah. And uh, I should have just had him get a hold of my wife and tell her I'm okay. And and I could have. I, I I know we had enough food for at least one more day. Yeah. But I, I I bailed out of there with him and and went hunt another spot. That he he put me right in the right spot. The first morning saw a great big old buck and. I spent eight hours trying to get that guy and it didn't work out. And then he came back and uh, we hunted the last three or four days or whatever it was, or three days, the last weekend. And man, it was like, he was so selfless. He's just like, yeah. there's the buck. And you know, if you're going to kill it, you better get moving. I'm like, it was like, you know, these guys spotted it first and everything. Right. And sure. After a while, I'm like, well, if you guys are giving me the green light, I guess I'm going to go. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I spent a long time on that buck too, and he watched me miss. And <laughs> oh, <he missed. laughs> oh yeah, oh, it was bad. <laughs> that's, that's hard. Yeah, mule deer for some reason I don't know, and I don't know I don't know why I crumbled, but mule it was deer. still one of the best hunts I've been on. Even though I didn't tag out, it was it was awesome. <laughs> yeah, that well, it just kind of goes to show you the type of people and i hear a lot i hear actually hear quite a few stories like that from training to hunt folks that man i met this guy and now we're hunting together yeah i met this guy and now 
you know, he, he's hooking me up in his state. Um, it's, it's, yeah. it's one of the big um, eye-openers, I think, that, about the train down community. The, people, yeah. the kind of people that are willing to just put their egos down and come yeah. up and do it. They're also willing to, to recognize that we're all like-minded and, and good people. Yeah. And like, yeah. if I'm going to, if I'm going to take somebody out and show my spots, it's going to be this guy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's, I, I could awesome. tell he was pretty hesitant. I would, it, it's a sacred place. I'll never share that area. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah, that, that goes without saying. Right? Yeah. So, that's but, like, <laughs> now that you've said that, uh, what's Aaron Link is number. <laughs> <laughs> five, five, five. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That goes without saying that's, yeah. that's like, Man, I don't know what would be worse than that. Oh, dude, I wouldn't even go in there without getting his blessing. You know, I want to go back bad, but but you wouldn't go in there no. solo. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, if he if he gives me the blessing to go solo, I'll do it. But I'm not going in his country without him yeah. being. It's okay, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, he's just not right to do that. Yeah, that's that's a fact. So we're getting into hunting ethics now, man. Yeah. <laughs> that's a deep rabbit hole. Okay, that's a yeah. deep rabbit hole yeah. that we could jump into, oh, man. That's crap. a whole podcast that is right a whole there. Yeah. Podcast. Well, we're uh, we're rubbing up against it. Yeah, I think yeah. that. Uh, so there's one one other question that um, I'm going to hit you with here, Trevor. If you had the world's attention for five minutes, hey, and everybody turned and, and could hear what you had to say. Okay. Let's say for 10 seconds you had their world's attention for 10 seconds Ooh. what would what would you say man hmm that's it's another profound question yeah uh, gosh uh, i don't know it, it, 10 seconds is not enough i guess yeah well uh, a minute what, yeah. would you, what would you tell them? Just let's say that you had, let's say you had, you know. So, Trevor, if you had one minute of the world's attention, what would you tell them? Well, I'd probably tell them that w we need to to open up our eyes and get back to the basics and and realize um, what what's really going on here on this planet. You know, the the sun comes up and the sun goes down. You know, you take away electricity and stuff from people. Uh, you need to realize that we're part of Mother Nature, and we need to we need to protect it. And and we're, it's not like you know, it, it, you get this feeling that like us humans aren't really supposed to be here or something. They, as far as if you're talking about in the hunting part of this life here. Uh, we we are a part of this planet, you know. So I I don't know. I would just want them to um, maybe just pay attention to the basics, you know. Let's yeah. get back down to what's real here and what really matters. And um, so what is that? What's that for you? What really matters? Um, I think just being just being just doing good you know i think if you if you consistently i guess I, that's what i would just say you know if, you, if you're always if you're just doing the right thing just do what's what you think is good and is the right thing then it's probably going to lead to good things it's going to it's that's that's what i'd have to say right you on. know i know that's a, that's a tough yeah, one it's man. That, yeah. that's a tough yeah. one but again something i think we should think about yeah you know because um People are always going to, especially as hunters, they're always going to ask us about our opinions on things or why we hunt or why we feel it necessary to go out and hunt and kill innocent animals or w whatever. And um, we should be able to, you know, talk to people um, in a way that, 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 uh, I just think that we should be able to explain ourselves, you know, and for, and so it gives you a kind of a, a launching pad. Like when I, when I drill you with the, well, what would you say to the world if you had one minute, <laughs> you know, that's a, that's a pretty big question. Yeah. But, um, you know, hopefully 
you know, what you say to the world, you should be saying to the r- people around you. Yeah. You know, and um, I just don't think people think about that very much. Yeah. There's, yeah. I don't know, there's a, a lot of crazy stuff that happens, a lot of hurtful, mean, just nonsense stuff. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I don't know. I, I guess we're a weird creature for that to to come upon us where people want to hurt other people yeah. for no for no reason yeah it's it, it's just bizarre it is we're, well, we're really we're kind of a, we're living in a really tough time really lost yeah. a very lost community of of people and i think that technology advancements in technology has surpassed our our basically our makeup our get our dna so far that it's easy to get lost in all the the jum- mumbo jumble and the lights and the fame and the and the you know in the in the world and people aren't really recognizing or how about this people aren't accepting what it means to be a human being and part of being a human being is is um, suffering. Mm-hmm. I mean bottom line there's going to be hard times yeah there's going to be hard times and when people are not willing to accept those hard times that's when things go bad that you know the reason people walk into schools and shoot the place up is they just they are rebelling against what it means to be people a person And and they're saying to the society i don't accept the fact that I don't think it's fair that I have that I have it so hard and I'm rebelling against basically the whole idea that life is hard and in in order for me to express that I don't accept this I'm just going to rebel against what it means to be pe- a person and I'm just going to you know take away life because they don't accept the responsibility for their life yeah and what it means to be people it's pretty deep but that's yeah that's it's it's so true that we're just we're losing focus on the basics like we're people people are are built for survival not necessarily happiness like we should be happy we Mm -hmm. you know god puts us on earth to be happy but we also there's also going to be suffer and pain Mm -hmm. and and, and, a, and a certain degree of of uh, struggle. And if you're not willing to accept that that's just part of being a human being, yeah. you're going to have a really tough time in this world. Yep. Yep. So well, I, I think, like, to go off of what Trevor was saying, kind of with the tombstone thing, um, I would say, like, just to be in the world, to be human in the world is to, you know, you have two choices. You can either treat people like crap and use people, or you can consider others better than yourself. Yeah. And you can be, and you can help people and be generous to people. And so those are your two choices. You know, those are your two choices. When you wake up in the morning, am I going to try to get what's mine and get what's best for me? Or am I going to try to be helpful? Right. And am I going to, if I see somebody on the side of the road that needs help, am I going to help stop and help them it, or whatever it is, if, it, you know, whether I f- feel like that person's a jerk to me or not, you know, it's not really, I mean, for me personally, it's not really up to me. Like everybody's made in the image of God. So I need to in turn go, Hey, I don't, it, it doesn't matter how you treat me. I am going to treat you with respect because you're made in the image of God. So and that's where it comes down to that's everybody is and so you don't earn respect or you you don't earn my respect you already have it yeah because i see god in you yeah whether no matter what you do now if you treat somebody poorly you know i might have to ha- intervene we might, we might have an intervention you know <laughs> but um because i'm going to be helping the yeah the person that's getting beat up or whatever, but uh, but, but you're you not going to jump to conclusions, no, just because of some one interaction you might have. Exactly, because we all have bad days and yeah. we all have moments where we slip up, and yeah. and you know, and just to understand humanity is that you know we all have those bad days, you know, 
but it's like it's like treating any human being like they're less than you is just wrong yeah it's just wrong yeah no matter what they're doing no matter who they are it's just it's it's just wrong yeah so treat others the way you'd like to be treated mm-hmm. exactly you know? and it got, it's getting deep in here wow. boys. Yeah. It's getting deep. <laughs> trevor hey i'm you know we're, i we're, just want to thank yeah. you for coming on the podcast man it's been it's like yeah. i said i've been watching you compete for so long we've never really sat down and had a, a lengthy conversation mostly yeah. because i'm running around like a chicken with his head cut off most of the time and you're yeah. uh and you're you're get you're uh winning and getting so you can go get some scouting in or whatever like we don't get to spend much time together but thanks man it's, it's been, yeah it's been fun uh, i appreciate you guys having me it's a it's an honor to be here and to help out and spread the word about train to hunt and yeah. give people something to listen to. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hopefully, you know, hopefully people will will subscribe and yep. and tune in and yeah. and um, is there any uh, Trevor? You're terrible about social media. I was going to say, is there places uh, no. that they can find you, like follow you, get to know you, like over the year? <laughs> um, do you do any kind of of social media stuff? Um, Do you I, want people bothering your social media? <laughs> <laughs> my, uh, my wife Lindsay loves it. She she likes to keep in contact, and yeah, I think she takes uh, posts a lot of pictures of stuff that we do together and yeah. stuff that I do. Um, I do have an Instagram that she set up. I have very <laughs> few pictures on it. Um, it's uh, Hunt Blacktail for Life. I think is the Instagram. Yeah. Um, I I don't know. Sometimes I don't know if I don't know if the social media stuff is a is a great tool and I like it. But then sometimes I think it gets abused yeah. in a way. Um, yeah. So but, so don't bother looking up. <laughs> on, on, on don't bother looking media. up Hunt Blacktail for life. You can <laughs> follow him on Instagram, but but really look up Lindsay Neistrat. <laughs> <laughs> his wife because she i i mean we went hunting and like literally like i'm going when we do train to hunt in oregon this year down at ashland at your home turf man <laughs> i'm just going to give her my phone <laughs> and have her run the whole social media because that girl can run social media <laughs> yeah well hey trevor it's been a it's been a blast i i know i'll see your mug a few times this summer and uh um Folks, we're going to go ahead and, and tune out, and I uh, hope you guys subscribe to the channel. We're going to be doing this podcast once a month. We're going to be re- releasing 12 podcasts in 2018. It'll be the second Saturday of every single month. We got some great – we got a great lineup for 2018, and uh, we'll just leave you with, with this thought. Just make sure that you're um, out there doing your due diligence in preparing for hunting season because the harder you train the bigger the reward so in the meantime train to hunt baby train to hunt jesse thank you for the kind words yeah man